Shooting Evolution, welcome to another edition of Shooting Plank. We'll be talking to you today about targets and what we're going to be doing out at Cedar Oaks with the uh, new setup that I've got. I'm still using the Shooting Target 7, of course. Uh, it's just going to be a different setup. You know, in the past we've had all these rails like this, and we've had them all with the brackets and everything and the targets all set up. Well, what would happen if I want to switch those out, which I found out I was wanting to switch out certain things so that I didn't have to do this all the time. Well, Shooting Target 7 has got something to save the day. It's this little bracket right here. And what that is, and I'll show you up close here. This is a bracket that will hold a rubber strap, a self-healing strap. And I'll show you what I'm talking about because we're going to put put one on and show you how it works. Uh, here's one here on a bullseye target. And as you can see, you're getting fresh paintings too. I've still got some out there at Cedar Oaks. I'm going to talk to you about painting in just a second here. Anyway, you can see these straps. Now, instead of them being already strapped down to a bracket, I can take this and take it in and out, and I'll show you here. Here's the bracket right here. All right. What I do is I stick it in that little knob right down here. That's what's going to go through this hole. And we take it and we put it in just like this onto there. Then you push that in just like this. And I'll bring that up and show you. That's how it's hooked onto there. And put it around this way you can see it. And you see how that's all uh, hooked there? Okay, now that can be taken off and switched with any target you want. Uh, like I said, that was a bullseye target, and we're going to be using that. Now, they fit a little bit tight, and they should. I mean, you don't want them flying off. And there it is. It comes off just like this. Okay, say I want to switch it out with uh, put that up there so we don't have it to slide off. Switch off with a bowling pin. I've turned the bowling pins from being uh, knockovers to one that we hang like this. You also notice I spray painted it red. Again, I'm going to tell you about that. And all you got to do is just take it like you did that one, slide it in there, put it down, and then take it out. Either way. So you can switch them out really, really easy like that. And what I've done is you'll notice I've got quite a few of them along here. In fact, there's seven of these all the way along here. The reason being is I have different size targets. So if I want to set up several targets, uh, say if I want to set up side by side with uh, that one right there, that bullseye, for a air gun rimfire on the lower end of things, and I want one for a higher one, well, I can put one down this way, and that'll be for like 9mm or 380 and on up. So, uh, and that's what we're going to be talking about, too, on that painting in just a second. And I'm going to show you a new gong we've got. This is for, like, cowboy competition in the uh, lower end of things. And what I'm talking about is rimfire, because they do have a, s a category now that's rimfire. So I've got a 16-inch gong, and this is definitely a rimfire air gun gong, because it's a 3 16ths inch, and it's an AR-400. And you'll notice it's black. So we're going to talk about the painting. And this has got double colors. Again, that one's got all those uh, brackets on it. I can slide that in the same way. And we got two of those. And then we got that swing out there. But, like I said, on the painting, this is black. That's because it's for air guns and rim fire. And that's what I have done. Put this down. I have painted them all. Now, yes, this has got a red bullseye, but that's so that you can see it. And I've got another target out there that is for the ones that should be red and on up. So i got to repaint that because it's painted just like this. And then the bullseye on that one will be black. There will be, definitely be a good color difference. This one is a half inch by AR500. And I've marked them too, by the way. That's another thing to do. Mark them on the back just like that so that you know. But I've painted it red. And you can tell it's a half inch. I mean, it's, it's going to take the higher stuff. Uh, so what I do, like I said with it, I color code it. It's going to be red for the higher stuff. 
this way, like say I got a couple of 12 inch gongs. It's really hard to tell sometimes between a 12 inch or any size on the thickness. Because there's times when you get quarter inch, three eighths, right in there or and then all of a sudden it's like okay there's the break right there now of course for rim fire and air guns it doesn't make a difference because it can go all the way down but once you get down so far with anything that's 380 on up then you can start doing some damage to your targets in fact i've got one it is an ar 600 now i've done that a little bit different so that i know that that's for my much higher ones and at a distance and what I'll do there is I'll paint it red but shooting target 7 has these magnetic stencils and I put that over the top I spray paint it red but then in the middle is all silver in this steel and I, I don't have that stuff here right now because like I said a lot of it's a cedar oak so I just wanted to show you what we're going to be doing this year which is going to be different but again the red target that way well say if you got them hanging up even and you start shooting, whoa, wait a minute, I don't want to shoot at that. You know, it's a 3 16th AR-400, and here I've got a 45 or 40 or whatever like that. <laughs> I don't want to shoot that target with that, so I want to put up a red. And just for something to throw out, too, if you're really on a budget, well, pretty much I am, too, but I've been able to get some deals here, and it, it, it helps a lot. Uh, and there's also a lot of discounts that uh, Shooting Target 7 offers. Just watch their website. There's a lot of things, and you can earn points and even get more discounts. So that's one of the ways I've done this, too. But as I said, if you're really on a budget and you're setting up a steel shooting type range, if you're lucky enough to have an area to go to to do it, uh, a good middle of the road uh, thickness and hardness is a 3 8 by 500. That will, of course, naturally, it'll take the rim fire and all that, but it'll also take pretty good calibers on up, uh, I think up to about 45, and uh, maybe a little more, I don't know. You have to look at the, the website, in fact. The Shooting Target 7 website has all of this on their site, and they really got it detailed really well. Is the different distances and everything. So Mark does a good job. Oh, by the way, while we're talking about shooting Target 7, some of you probably don't know, it's a veteran-owned and operated company, and they make it in the USA. Yep, that's it. They're laser cut, too. These targets are laser cut, and they're cut out of U.S. steel. Made in the United States. It's not any cheap steel from out of the country. It is the United States steel. So if you want a USA target company, definitely take a look at Shooting Target 7. Now, that's enough of an advertisement, I guess, but I did want to bring that out. And I've been very happy with their products. Uh, I've been using them out at Cedar Oaks. I've used some others, too. There's some other companies there that I've got. But uh, basically now, it's about 99% uh, Shooting Target 7. And with this new setup that I've got, with these rubber straps, and you'll notice I've got these snaps on here. You can see those when I was showing up close. That's so that these don't go sliding on down. Because a lot of times if you set up something with, with your rings and that sort of stuff, and you're shooting at them, these start sliding one way or the other up and down that rail. Don't do that if you put those on. And get some good quality ones. I got some cheap ones that I, I thought, okay, they'll work. They're not really the proper size. I've really got to squeeze them down with a... a grip on the things and pliers well even the pliers don't work right on them uh, in fact i've been using channel locks big channel lock to put them on and it works these though i got these right from shooting target seven and uh, he tells you he said you can get a lot of this stuff at your hardware store yeah you can but make sure you get the good quality stuff like he's used because i definitely found the difference there's one these down here that are down a little bit further. That's some of that other style. And you can even look at them. They're good. Well, if I can get this off here, I'll show you what I'm talking about. And the reason I'm spending time on this, it's important for you to get the right stuff. See these? Okay, these are the cheapies. These are the good ones. Look at the difference. In the, you can just tell the quality. And as they say, you get what you pay for. And they work. I've worked, used them. 
But I've shot these, I've hit them, and I don't even remember how. I hit one, just blew the thing apart. Yeah, it might do the same thing here, I don't know, but I shot it with a 22 and it blew it apart. So, you know, that's, <laughs> I'm not too sure about that. Anyhow, that's what I want to talk to you about, the different painting that I do for color coding, but also what we're going to be doing this year out at Cedar Oaks and uh, going on through and like I said, I think these are going to work out pretty good. We'll be telling you more about them as we use them more. But right now, it's dead winter, and I'm just working around out there as I can. So until next time, shoot safe and have a great day of planking.